So after five, sun is gonna go down shortly. But I'm a little bored and decide I'm gonna strip this dead and sunbeam baker. So I've just taken off the inside and it's not much in there as you could see and this is what came out from inside. So I have some screws in there had before. So yeah, this is the plan. Let me strip it out, let me see how I can get it. Well, it seemed like these would have been where they put screws but turns out no, they don't have screws. They put a piece of rubber foot in but no screws in there. This was fun taking this out. This little piece here is a ceramic block that's suspended. Ah, uh, move my hand. Suspended this thing here off the edge. Two screws going in. Right, ceramic block. Long screw. Screwdriver. Full length. Add the block, add the screw. Hmm. Lots of fun. Side, decent enough motor. Looks like it's. Uh, uh, might be an induction motor, might be too complicated, simple, maybe just like a fan. Um, circuit board, nothing too complex, and it does look really like those are just the only screws that ever had. Um, that said, it probably has to pry a little bit more, those little tabs look like they held on pretty strong. So let me try to pop this out, and let me see what else they have. Protected, simple board in front as we saw, this was lots of fun to come out. Luckily, the glue they used was pretty much old on dry rack. Uh, pretty much glue like this. They stuck this on here. So still see some remnants there. So that caused a little bit of a problem, but now that's all. Um, yeah, simple cap. And basically, yeah, um, solenoid board on the board. Um, hmm, one of those X2 capacitors to get filtering of these signals. From running back onto the mains, it looks relatively simple. I think I'm just gonna lock it open and see. This motor probably has a good RPM, probably gonna be able to just stick that into a fan and use it, um, or for any other purpose. Um, yeah, let me just take this off these screws on the corners and see what we got. Simple tooted pulleys and belts, you can see, so it's not a bad drive system. This belt is gone, it's really tacky and soft now. I like the attention to detail and proper routing of the cable, proper securing. So I'm just gonna take these off. Um, beyond that here, let me see. Simple, just a motor and pulley. I assume this will have to have some serious torque on it for it to work. Clean and mixer. Um, right, let me see if I can crack this up a bit. Heating element. Two inputs, I assume straight 120. Do I expect it any different? And this is most likely the thermistor. It's coming off. Actually, this might be the thermistor. Yeah, yeah. There's a thermistor in there. Yeah. And I mean, with proper fiberglass insulation, you know, wires are properly um, heat shrunk, properly insulated with the fiberglass insulation. Really well done. No complaints on the design wise. Unfortunately, the hole here is a very small. What they've chosen to do is bring the wire in and then crimp it. Ah, uh, this is just too much trouble. It's just easier for me to just nip a little piece of this plastic so I can get this connector through. Um, not like I'm using back this anyway. This time, sun's going down. Well, just has stripped off the board. Just put in here. I like the holder. Um, I like the design. It's not bad. It's a pretty good design. Um, I suspect this is actually a thermistor and this is possibly a thermocouple so sensing and control feeling that this will probably physically break the electrical contact um, at a given set point I suspect as well it is I'm going to trace it a little bit and see but that makes sense for it to be that it has a writing TF2 and I suspect it's a, just a tumor shutdown. It makes sense for it to be that. Um, somebody's done some rework here, obviously. Um, hmm. Some little bit of dodgy soldering. Inside the whole thing is actually um, conformal coated, which is, uh, I guess, to be expected given the environment it's in. But the conformal coatings on this side, nothing on this side. Um, Nah, that is the side actually when you put it in facing the um, the mixing basin but yeah 
um, on second thoughts about this I think I'll just cut this um, you know what I want to try to use this motor and well obviously I need the capacity of it and to use back that board I'm gonna have to go through the, all the controls and use back all these and take these off and that's, that's too much rammers so the easier thing for me to do is just cut these wires join them all up and in which case spin this end like this it's not too useful so let me get to that let me try something and see how that works out I really shouldn't complain it's six o'clock and places dark um, at least we're not in the northern hemisphere where I'm probably freezing my tail off now I mean this is like 25 degrees Celsius great temperature just a little dark earlier weird transformer 10 volt transformer so I find that to be a little bit odd uh, 10 volts to 50 M um, that's the controller six diodes um, again a little bit odd um, you would think it would be bridge rectifier so um, you would expect to get you know, four actually I'm not watching and there's two more here so now eight diodes um, hmm. I wonder if the rectifying 120 and rectifying the 10 volts could be um, SCR for switching and that switches on the motor I believe and the relay is switching um, the heating element and again that that sounds about right because if you look at it where this relay is located it's located very very close to the two brown contacts that went to the heating element and these are the two contacts that went to the um, uh, the temperature sensitive switch I suspect it to be so yeah that sounds about right not sure why they're doing that many diodes but as I said has to be 120 um, rectification and 10 volt rectification a little beeper couple of resistors couple of little passives no microcontroller here so that means the microcontroller is on the front board which again a little bit of a different approach but with this rack here they could get all that information across the micro so yeah let me just pull that board up and have a look at that quickly then here I put on the lights I was trying to get this all done before the sunlight went all of it but mm, that didn't work out very well um, so yeah well that's interesting I guess the chip on the controller is directly under the screen and it controls the screen and the um, whole board some interesting traces on the side single-sided board it looks like yeah single-sided um, just a few jumpers on the side um, and the passives through holes through on this way uh, nice design not bad at all nice design I like it um, right it's a typical little rubber with the um, conductive rubber contacts on the PCB traces it looks cool plated not too very well gold plated but it does look gold plated this is a straight cup up so that's not too bad so I'll just have to pop this off and see what's below but chances are it's going to be a sort of blob um, same sort of. It'll be a epoxy blob chip. Uh, unlikely to be a readable number. I stand corrected. It is in fact um, a proper package. Um, so yeah, it's possible to read. Uh, but the conformal coating, and it does have a conformal coating on this side of the board too. It was difficult to get past. Um, so. I've taken that off with a plastic tone and right now this is all trick I do I normally just put a little bit of um uh, basically antacid um a white substance let it dry and then wipe it off and the numbers and it should become a lot more visible as it stands right now it isn't very visible so very shortly I'll determine what chip it is it looks like a 8 by 4 side so 64 pin chip could be a typical little micron I would say not the similar to 328 one of those little Arduino um, type chips it looks like it might be pretty much that maybe a little bit um, lower capacity actually because that has some um, a bit more capacity functionality programming wise this probably doesn't have that much to do it really just has to control as LCD not the most complex things input wise we are looking at 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 inputs so the number of pins on the chip is important in terms of the actual uh, memory 
and processing capacity not so much I mean this isn't a fast application this isn't a complex application this is a straightforward simple logic if you press this show this do that you know so nothing complicated well after some digging I still can't find this number the TR slash XPI or XP1 it's not working out the other number behind it's not working out so yeah no luck but either way simple enough microcontroller nothing that's too expensive uh, probably dollar dollar ten cents fifteen cents us nothing to talk about quick review of this space uh castle when i'm housing here this four pegs 15 into the four holes and there's three screw holes well three which is screw rent from this side into the sheet metal um so i found this out and i initially thought that they had pressed it in they did not after pulling it out and taking off this little piece of plastic washer which is to protect the um thing from dust from getting in so they more for dust card i realized it actually had a silk clip Hopey thing didn't pull that out so yeah this looks this was pressed into here so this is actually not meant to rotate this in itself rotates it looks a bit like a bronze from this final strip down what I'm going to try to do is connect up this motor see if it works so we've got the end of the plug which I cut out remember I cut out those ends um, the start run capacitor I assume it's a start run capacitor these capacitors are always on and the three wires my assumption here is red goes to red this black goes to this white and this black goes to well the live on this the other one goes to the connection with the black and this white hopefully i have this correct i guess we'll find out shortly if it goes poof it's made i guess the moment of truth so this is the neutral i've joined that to this black and the white live onto the black and right to red we shall see let's hope this is correct right moment of truth let's see if this thing works hopefully it does okay no proof cool final note on this video is taking off this portion as i said it was pressed in here and if you probably could see yeah see that rough finish inside there so that is biting onto this amazingly aluminum housing and it was able to come out with a little bit of tap so not that great the um grease is pretty stiff it's not coming off easily so that's no good the grease on the shaft not very good very thick gunky um there's a groove for the silk clip silk clip but that was lots of fun coming out as you could see i've scraped up the shaft quite well so it's clearly not stainless steel a mild steel shaft for me it's not rusted though um so the last thing i want to do is probably just clean up this bushing a little bit and the shaft with some probably acetone and just see how nicely it spins um because right now it really is a bit stiff um so yeah maybe when it's cleaned up it'll spin a little bit better but that's just for just to see what the finish was before and move it a little see what kind of plate has in it another final final one um so i've done nothing but just clean this up with acetone and again this with acetone no actual filing sanding or anything else watch this shake that's horrible that is just completely unacceptable for bushing um they were really getting away with this based upon the grease that is really really badly 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 engineered this i can complain about